This is a typical scene that you see in real world and in a video game, it's actually surprisingly hard to represent this for one important reason. So let me maximize this and we will study a little bit how the sun will affect this scene. And I'll make this uh, white cubes here on purpose because it's easier to visualize than uh, any other thing with textures. Uh, but basically the sun is over there and there is the sun rays, of course, obviously, and they are basically reaching the surface directly like this and lightening the surface. This is basic stuff. This is uh, PBR stuff or any phone stuff. Uh, we'll actually do the trick. And you can see here, since this surface here is directly pointed towards the sun direction, it is receiving a lot of light. And this surface here, uh, it is not pointing directly to the sun, so it is receiving less light, and this is why we have like this uh, fade here. And this part here is completely not uh, shaded by the sun at all, so there is no sun ray directly reaching this part here in the back. Uh, and this is the same for this part here of the ground, and this is exactly why we do have the shadow. We can see that this sphere is generate, generating shadows uh, in the ground, and you can also see here on the left that this pillar here that I made it purposely not touching this wall, it is generating some sort of shadows, because again, those points here are not uh, directly being hit by the sun. But in real life, uh, you will notice that even though this is not hit by the sun, Sun, there is still light coming uh, going on here and why why this is a real life uh, behavior because light if you of course imagine and think for a second the sun is over there and it is the light is hitting this uh, the surface but it is bouncing and of course the bounce of the light is dependent on the material that it is bouncing and this is only um, truly representative like 100% accurate with ray casting and ray tracing and all that um, but we do a lot of approximations in video games um, so one very very common approximation that we do is to have an ambient light because of course we expect for example this area here to be somehow lit by the sun that reaches this wall here. So it, it reaches here and then it bounces and it lit this thing. Uh, then we have some sun rays that reach this other uh, wall here and it bounces and it hit here. And of course it does multiple bounces in real life endlessly actually and somehow it reaches this, uh, this position here. And one thing that is very interesting in a, in a scene like that, is that this bounce, since we have to approximate in a video game, it's very hard, uh, nearly impossible to calculate this in real time, even with ray tracing, with the techniques we have in uh, RTX stuff, it's still a little bit of an approximation, uh, but the way the light bounces is not 100% uniform. I mean, um, you're not gonna have the same indirect light amount here than you have over here. Why? Because this is a bit of a hard to reach place. Here it's very wide open so we can see that the, the light is bouncing everywhere and very easily reaching this this position while this right near uh, next to the uh, bottom of the sphere uh, it's a bit darker because light have a hard time reaching this so it needs to bounce a lot and it loses a lot of energy and this is the same here uh, for this part that it is hard to reach, and also the borders here, the corners. If you look at your room, if you're in your bedroom or your living room right now, and then you look at the corners of the walls, you will see that they are a little bit less bright than the rest of the, the scene. Um, and this is exactly because of this. There's less light bouncing and reaching this place. Um, and in a video game, we approximate that. Oops, I... Hit, I triggered the tutorial accidentally here uh, with ambient occlusion. So if I disable the ambient occlusion in the scene here, you can see that all of a sudden it looks very weird and somehow not realistic at all. And you can see we do have problems like look at this specific image here. Um, we lose a bunch of details. It, it almost seems like the, the, the scene is not lit at all. Um, you can see I can barely see that I do have a wall over there. Uh, you can see that this uh, the sphere here is weirdly touching here, like what is going on here? And this is exactly, uh, this is exactly because we don't have 
this bounce thing taken into consideration. So every part of the area is lit uniformly and every shade area is lit with the ambient light uniformly. So this is not realistic at all um, and this is why game engines this is not a new technique, uses ambient occlusion. Um, and this video is all about the new ambient occlusion that I've implemented for Cave Engine 1.3. Yes, um, 1.3 will have a much better ambient occlusion. Uh, until then, Cave Engine had an early ambient occlusion that was part of the post-processing step. So previously, if you open the post-processing filters, uh, you will find the anti-aliasing, FXAA, and the color corrections. Of course, it's a way to uh, do some Let's mess something up. I don't know. Let's shift the hue. Yay, crazy stuff going on. Anyways, so this is ambient occlusion. This is a color collection, but um, you also had an ambient occlusion and it was very, very bad. And many people complained about this. One of the most common uh, problems that this old ambient occlusion had, other than the complexity, it was the fact that uh, it was generating most of the time. If you go to previous uh, cave videos, I don't have one here to show you, but it was generating like a weird ghosting effect around the characters and around everything, uh, making everything looks very weird and dated and bad and old. Um, and another major issue that the old ambient occlusion had, and I don't think many people noticed that, is that the old ambient occlusion for Cave was actually being applied in a post-processing step, as I saw, but as I just showed you. But this means that if I had like a uh, transparent material, so let's make this material here, and let's make this material blue, and let's go to the settings, uh, activate alpha blending, and then here I will reduce the alpha factor so it's semi-transparent, you can see here. Um, well, we do have a semi-transparent material, as of course we expect, but uh, it, it is not like the ambient occlusion over there, it is still in the background, because it is still part of this thing. It's, well, basically exactly as you expect <laughs> the ambient occlusion to be. But before, until Cave 1.3, like before this, um, this ambient occlusion would be created in front of the transparent material, which would be like very, very bad, to a point that you had to choose pretty much if you would use ambient occlusion or transparent materials in your game because if you use both, um, it will probably gonna be bad. Um, so this is of course not optimal. So now I changed, I completely rewrote the ambient occlusion for Cave uh, and it is now part of the engine itself, part of like the core uh, mechanics. It's no longer a post-processing filter. Uh, so if I select the, the, the scene here, just like I can adjust like the sun brightness by the way, Cave Engine do have HDR, so I can make this sun intensity like go crazy high, and it's fine. Now I need to adjust, of course, everything else because it, it's too bright. But anyways, uh, just like I can adjust these things, I can also adjust the ambient occlusion. Oh, I, I love the fact that we do have this in Cave, by the way. <laughs> I can't stop playing around, folks. Sorry. Anyways, let's, let's go back here. Uh, so we can simply select the scene, click here in the ambient occlusion, now you can simply disable this and enable if you want, and you can see it is very, very, very simple to adjust. All you have is the radius, the intensity, and the bias, so if I change the radius, you can see it's more dramatic or less dramatic, very simple stuff. Of course, you can always control click and make some very crazy value, it will break everything, but you can do it, uh, because many people don't know that you can control click in Cave to type manually, so this is a, a tip uh, and can also adjust the intensity. Maybe you want no intensity or maybe you want a very dramatic ambient occlusion. Now we have some dramatic stuff here. Uh, anyway, so you're free to do this. You can adjust the bias as well. You can even debug to see what's going on. So this is how the ambient occlusion is currently being calculated in Cave. It, as you can see, very smooth. By the way, many people will say, oh, this was supposed to be white and black. No, uh, yes, but because of the the way that we calculate the ambient occlusion here in Cave, it is actually part of the main uh, process of the engine, and HDR is taken into account, so Cave Engine is actually doing the eye adaptation, and this is why it's not super white here, but trust me, it, it is <laughs> what you expect. But anyways, it's very good to see the new ambient occlusion in Cave. You can see it is very stable now, very hard to break. Uh, it does cover like some penumbra areas, as you can see here, I don't have any shadows, this is pretty much the ambient occlusion, and it's like out of the box what you expect. You can play the game, 
can go there and I can have the image occlusion just fine. So this is pretty much the new feature. I wanted to explain a little bit what is the image occlusion and all that because I know that many people are not going to uh, know this. Of course, many people know what is an image occlusion, but I think this is a cool educational video. By the way, yes, we do have inverse kinematics uh, in CAVE, and this is by default. This is like the default scene. This is not a, like a test scene. Um, if you create a new project in CAVE 1.3, you have like all these characters, the world, the map, and all everything, even the, the skybox, by the way. Very nice. And now I need to adjust the, anyways, the, the roughness map of this proto character. But that's it. I believe it's a very good addition for Cave. It's part of the core process. It's very simple. I really wanted to, uh, to have the settings here simple because uh, there's a lot of different ambient occlusion techniques. And most of them, there's a lot of stuff here that you need to control, uh, like not only the radius and intensity and the bias, but you had a bunch of other stuff, and I really dislike this. So I believe that now with this uh, new ambient occlusion, it's much simpler, it's much uh, straightforward, and also works with transparent materials. And look at my shadows. I love seeing the shadows here because it is casting shadow in the transparent material, but also in the ground. Super nice. Anyways, so that's it for this video. A little bit of a different video. Let me know in the comments if you like this videos uh, explaining stuff because I can bring more. And if you are interested into Cave, I'll leave the link here for you to know the engine. And if you are interested into getting Cave 1.3 as a beta tester, uh, direct message me in our website uh, and it will grant you access. I'm granting you, I'm granting people limited access for now to Cave 1.3. So if you're interested, let me know that. My name is Guilherme, thanks for watching and I see you in the next video. Bye!